on Sunday I was putting the final touches on my talk for tonight, and um, I got this email in my box. Subject, Patty, your help, I'm stuck. Bali, film, writing. Hi Patty, I'm in Bali and I'm stuck. Last year I watched your TEDx talk and got some friends together, and we all drew our future, and then dot, dot, dot. My background is I've been a film assistant director for 14 years, and in between movies, I always take off traveling, and each time I start writing a book, and I get to the 40% mark. So now I have 12 books in various <laughs> stages of completion, and nothing completed. But at the moment, I'm pretty stuck and depressed. I have some possibilities and nothing solid, a place I've been over and over again for the last decade. Any advice? Cheers, Mike. <laughs> well, how many of you can relate to that email? Raise your hand. OK, I know I can. I mean, change is tough, right? So tonight, I want to talk about how you can make change more easily. Change in your work, change in your relationship, change in your health, any change, personal or professional. I'm obsessed with change. Why? Because change scares the hell out of me. I mean, think about it. Change is scary, right? Right? Yeah. It starts off with this little tiny smidgen of something needs to shift, and then suddenly, you know, you think, wow, maybe I just need to crank this to the right a little bit, or maybe I just need to do this one little thing, and then 14 years later, you've got 12 manuscripts that haven't been finished. Or maybe you're like my dad who came up with the interstellar drive idea, and he never did it. Why? Because, you know, we get this feeling inside, this weird kind of strange, unsettled gnawing and something has to give. But what? What? Change is it's tough, and it's messy, and it's confusing. So I've come up with a way to make change more simply. And here's how I did it. I was working in a large investment firm in Colorado in 2000. I was the consultant brought in. And you know, uh, this is when the market crashed, and with it crashed this company. And of the 2,800 employees, they had to lay off 700 in one day. My job was to get all the survivors of the layoff back to work. And they were a wreck. You know, I walk in, and the SVP of HR, she burst into tears. <laughs> And 2,100 employees, everybody's upset, angry, worried. Think about it. My first employee group were a nightmare. They're screaming, crying, throwing things. It's hostile. At lunch, after the first part of my managing change workshop, <laughs> which people are so happy to be at, I hide in the bathroom. I, I go in a stall and I lift up my legs. I mean, what am I doing here? I'm saying, I, you know, I can't do this. I'm not qualified to help these people. And I stay in there for about an hour. <laughs> and it gets really quiet. And then I get this idea. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw the big picture for them. Because they need to understand how to get from here to there, to there. And so I go back in there, and I put this huge piece of paper up on the wall, and I give everybody a Sharpie, and I say, OK, what I want you to do is I want you to go up here, and I want you to write and draw your reaction and what's driving them. So they're tentative at first, and then they just rush up there, angry. Why'd they do this risk this way? They told us they'd never fire people, sad. What about all my friends? Afraid. What about my job? What about my kids? After about a half an hour of this, it gets really calm in the room. All the anxiety goes way down. 
And so I say, okay, now we have a starting point. And I write current state. And then I go out on a limb and I say to them, okay, I'm gonna take a big risk here. I'm gonna ask you, what do you want your lives to be like in this company one year from today? Tell me. And it starts off slow, and then somebody says, we're making money again. So that goes on the paper. We're bonused, that goes up there. Management is finally listening to us, that goes up there. We're smiling again. Life is more stable. And then some guy at the back yells, yeah, but how are we gonna get from there to there? And out of my mouth comes, we build a bridge. And, and then I just make it up on the fly. Okay, what are the three boldest things you can do to get yourself from here to there? Three bold things. And so they brainstorm it and they say, realistic strategy, bold step one. Management transparency, bold step two. Change our culture, bold step three. And I step back, current state, desired state, three bold steps, it's a map. We made a map. Fast forward to today. Thirteen years and thousands of big picture maps later, I found some common themes. Whether I'm working with Fortune 100 companies and helping them become better leaders, or kids in Harlem who don't have any problem at all thinking about the desired new reality, they just have a really hard time being in the current state. Or heads of state, governors, who can't figure out really how to get those bold steps to happen in the next four years. I found these common themes. When you first draw the current state of your life, whether for you or someone else does it, for a team of people who are completely upset, it brings your anxiety way down. So when you draw your life right now, in whatever shape it is, what happens is you see yourself and you separate yourself from what it is that you feel right here that place inside. And from that place, then you can actually move on. And you can let go of that tornado that they were standing in at, at that investment firm and step more into the future. You can let go. And when you just draw the pictures of what you see inside your head when you're really dreaming your best case scenario, it does something to your brain. Your brain restructures itself, and it believes this new reality is reality now. And so it aligns you to that goal. And what you find is that you're filled with serotonin, which is the elixir of life, honestly. And you feel so fantastic that you believe anything is possible. And so if you continue to look at that drawing every day, then it inspires you. It fills you with hope and it lets you know that you can make that happen. And how do you make it happen? Well, you've gotta have three bold steps, which really is nothing more than an action plan, a gap analysis and an action plan. If you break each one of those steps down into smaller actions, then it gives you some semblance of control over what's happening. Look at her. Doesn't she look happy? She knows exactly what she's gonna do tomorrow, and that's what you need during change. And then there's this mysterious thing that I discovered in all these maps, that on occasion, I would draw something for a team, like what I did for Lola Michelin, and I drew this picture, and then this happened. It happens over and over again. And then there are stories, like I heard about the senior in high school. She couldn't finish. She was worried. 
She didn't stress out because one of her favorite teachers had suddenly died. And her mom came to me and said, what do I do? And I said, well, draw her a map. And sure enough, she went back. She drew this somewhat chaotic but beautiful map. And then this came to be. And you know, I can't begin to even start to describe the neuroscience between what happens when you draw a visual about where you want to be. I just know that it works because every week in my email box and in my phone messages, I get things like this, tweets in my Twitter feed from people all around the world who are writing me to tell me that drawing their future made a change. And then we get the occasional email from somebody like Mike, who really just needs to be encouraged and listened to so that he knows that he can go back and do what we all know, which is that all good change starts with us. That if you want to get rid of that feeling right here, you got to get off your butt and do something. So for those of you who haven't drawn your map yet, or who have drawn your map, and you know you need to do a new one, I encourage you to. No, I beg you. Just get a crayon, a piece of chalk. You know, do it on the back of a receipt. Go and do it on the sidewalk or at the beach in the sand. But do yourself a favor and draw your vision to reality. So when you feel that weird, strange feeling, that lost at sea feeling inside of you, make a map and draw yourself back home to you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to start the same way uh, with Q&A, if anybody has a question. So I brought some uh, maps at the back, and they're on the back table. So if you've never done it before and you don't know what I'm talking about, or maybe haven't seen my TED Talk, take a map with you. Yes. Hi, Patty. I, I actually came here tonight most specifically for you because I was at TED in 2012 and saw your talk, and I am a transition coach, and I thought your work was absolutely inspired. And I use it now almost almost with every single one of my clients. I don't have blanket approaches, but it's such an effective and impressive and um, an amazing tool to get that eye-hand connection happening and for people to connect with. They always know more than they think they do. Everybody comes to me and saying, I have no idea. I just know right now is not good, but I have no idea what I want it to be. And I always say you know way more than you think you do. And it's one of the most effective ways to show people that. So I encourage all of you to take her advice and do your map because it's really, really impactful. And I also want to say thank you for it. And I love hearing the story of how it came to be and you following your own instincts as a consultant and a coach to get your group to move. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I was just too green to know any better. I just needed to have something happen. Yeah, thank you. I stumbled on it. Yes, anyone else? I, I didn't, she's not a shill. I didn't do that. <laughs> how often do you redraft your own? Um, how often do I read back my own map? Redraft. redraft it. You know, I do a map anytime I feel stuck. So, and I'm a large format person, so I put a big piece of paper up. And there's one in my office right now, just about what I wanted to do. And, um, so I do it as often as I feel anxious. I, I honestly, the things on the right side of your map, your desired new reality that you draw, as they start to happen, you might want to hone in on one of them and then do a map just about that. But you'll be surprised. The things that are most important to you, and actually those little images on the right side of your map, even if you draw archaic, simple stick figures, it doesn't matter, it's like a portal. Honestly, it's like a daily double. You don't know. It, you can go in there and go way deep into that one thing. And the things that really resonate for you, they'll unfold much more quickly with a picture. 
I was gonna say, do uh, so you, you find that because you know everybody's in such chaos, they're not. It's hard to think straight. And it's hard to visualize. So is that kind of what you're aiming for with these people? Is that stop, reflect, take a moment, and then paint a picture, and then focus on that picture, which gives because we we definitely tend to be more a society that's very visually oriented now. Yeah. It's even more so, it seems with computer technology. Yes. Yes, I would say th the main thing is what we're trying to do is visualize what the inner outer, that's what we're doing. So we're giving expression to that. It's projection, you know, uh, art therapists have been doing it for years, but that's what it is. You project yourself onto the page and then it clarifies things for you. And Dan Brome would say, you know, you look at all that data and close your eyes for a second and your brain will restructure it. That's what happened for me in that bathroom when I was trying to get the idea, is I got, it got quiet enough in there for me to hear, you know, hear the answer. And you will too, because you know the answer, as she was saying, you know the answer. That might be a good place to stop, you guys, you know. <laughs> just saying. So. <laughs> Hopefully I don't seem dense, but what's the difference between this and just writing out your short-term and long-term goal? Uh, well, <clears throat> the difference, there actually isn't too much difference except that the weird thing about doing a picture is that it activates your brain in a way that just writing doesn't as well. It can if you write really uh, do big graffiti, but what you're trying to do is to wake up your brain. And what we write all the time, right? And so what we're trying to get our brain to do is to stay alert, stay alert to this. And there's something about doing a picture that when you do it, there is something in the science of it, of the activation of both sides of your brain, uh, even more than writing, that allows um, you to connect at a deeper place to it. And if you look at the picture, and this is often what I say is look at the picture and fill yourself with it. Color the things that you want to really have happen and call it out because the brain, you know, it only can hold a few things on the, the surface of it. You know, it only holds three things and it's, it's uh, what do I focus on today? And everything else falls down into the basement of the subconscious or it sits in the audience in your memory and, you know, you can't find it within all of the data that we sort through, which we saw earlier. Yes, last question? Last question. <laughs> Thank you so much, these are fantastic questions. Thank you. You talk about all the uh, wonderful thank you emails that you've received from people whose lives were positively transformed. What's the other side? Do you get any emails? Oh my God, I drew my map and it's a mess. I lost my wife, my kids hate me, I lost my job. Um, you know, I think that's true uh, whether you do a map or not. Those things happen, right? Um, and yes, I do get um, emails from people, but more, you know, I don't get that. What I do get is people like this guy, Mike. He said he drew a map, right? That was part of his email. He and his friends drew a map of their future, but he's still stuck, right? And that's what happens, is that we look at the map and we freak out. And 10 years later, sometimes we make the map happen. But everything happens in its own time. So I often say to people, you know, if you're not ready, it won't happen. Because you won't put your attention and your energy into it. You're, not, you're too scared still, and that's okay. It's better to know that you're scared and accept it than to try to force yourself to move on. And I honestly, I've never had anybody say, I left my wife and I left my, I have them say, I left my job. And I always say, well, thank God for that. I hope you went into business for yourself because you hated that job, you know, like that. But I don't get the other. So I'll let you know if I do, I'll post something. So I, I encourage you to, Please um, get on my blog if you're interested at all in the visual. And if you know anything about the visual and, and you've had your own experience with it, please email me because I keep all that and then it'll become data for a later talk. And I appreciate all of your, all of your help with the research of it. Thank you.